this morning when I opened my inbox, I saw this email from Google that I have access to Palm API now. So if you're not familiar with Palm, Palm is Google's new large language model. It's actually a combination of different models. And now uh, they have made it available through an API, just like OpenAI. So it's going to be my very first look at this API. And let's see what we can do with it. So once you click on it, uh, the interface is pretty neat. So there are three different types of prompts. One is text prompt, data prompt, and then chat prompt. And at the bottom, you can actually create your API key, just like OpenAI. And all of this is a part of Google's generative AI dashboard. This is going to be just a first look at the API and its capabilities. I will be making more detailed videos on if, is use cases and applications. And we can potentially integrate this as a part of LangChain uh, to do information retrieval from documents. So stay tuned for those videos. Okay, so let's explore some of these options here. We're going to uh, check these one by one. So first, let's uh, look at the text prompt. So they have a couple of sample examples. So let's say uh, we're going to first look at a summarize a paragraph. Now, in this case, uh, they have provided the prompt. The prompt is summarize this paragraph and detail some relevant uh, context, right? The first, they have provided text, then a summary of the text. And then here is another text. Uh, and we want the summary of this text, right? So if you look at it, the preview, this is how the model is going to receive your information, right? Now, here is the model that is being used. So in this case, uh, it's using text bison. Uh, think of it as a DaVinci or GPT 3.5 from, from OpenAI. And you can set some parameters here as well, but we're going to keep everything to default. Uh, and then you can simply run this. So if you run it, uh, now imagine you provide your API uh, with all this text, right? And then ask it to summarize the last section. So this is the uh, result that you would expect. Okay, now the great thing is they actually have um, this section here where you can get the corresponding code. So here's how you're going to be using this uh, in Python, right? So I'm going to open this in Google Colab. Just look at an example uh, of how this will look like. When I clicked on this link, uh, opening Colab, it actually uh, generated a whole code for it, which is pretty awesome. All right, so let's look at this. Uh, what do we need to run it? So if you have seen my previous videos, uh, it's a Google Colab, way similar to, let's say, something like LangChain. Uh, you can integrate it with LangChain, I think. And uh, you just need to run the code, but we need to provide the open uh, the API key. Uh, so in order to get the API, API key, I'm going to uh, go here to get API key then we are going to create a new one and that's going to be for this new project uh, i will make sure that i delete this after testing it yeah. okay so we got the our api key so i'm going to copy this go back to my google colab paste it here right and now let's connect to the runtime and let's start executing the code so it's going to hopefully give yeah it's initializing so it's connected right now, in, in order to use it in your own projects, you have to first install this new package called uh, Google Generative AI. Everything is uh, part of that. All right, so let's run this. It's going to uh, download the required packages. Okay, we need to actually restart the runtime. So I'm going to say restart runtime. Click yes. Okay, let's see. So this is basically running uh, the example that we just saw uh this example right a similar example uh so it's going to be just running that but it's giving us the whole code of how to run it right we'll quickly look at the implementation and this is going to show us like how you can use this in your own applications so it seems like we ran that uh we give it the api key next uh we're telling which model to use so by default for text generation it's using bison 001 uh, they have kept the naming convention similar to OpenAI. So that is very interesting. Okay, so next are some model parameters and then the maximum output tokens uh, that's defined in here. Now, the interesting thing is they converted the uh, original text into base64. But if you want to use it in your own um, applications, you need to simply provide a string 
here and then it will work right so uh, you don't have to do the base 64 but i don't know like why this is converted right uh so essentially you set the default these are the parameters for your model then in order to run this uh or make a prediction you simply need to get palm dot generate underscore text pass on the default parameters that you just set and then uh the text that you have so let's look at the results okay so when we run this um i actually got the summary and this is pretty neat okay so it's a very simple way of uh configuring your uh api key and then using it it's very similar to openai okay so that was just um text generation example i'm actually interested in uh, looking at how this uh, data prompt works so let's create one and um, we will look at the examples they have provided. So first look at this opposite examples. Uh, so here they have provided uh, some uh, inputs and outputs. So the opposite of uh, strong is weak, thick is thin, and so on and so forth. Now this is great because here uh, you can actually test the model, how it's going to behave uh, before you deploy it and use the API, right? So as a user, you can provide your inputs, some examples, and then here are the test uh, examples as well. Let's uh, add another one. So I'll say good, and the model response should be bad, right? Okay, now we can test it again. Uh, let's look at the model. So it's again using the text Python model, right? And if we run it, let's see what happens. Let's see, I'm uh, wrong, right? And uh, fast and slow, right? So as I said, this is a great feature because you can actually test it here and you will know the behavior um, of the uh, responses when you test it using the uh, API calls. Uh, let's look at another example. So uh, this one is what? Um, analogy factory. So busy like a bee, right? Living in a bubble, right? So a drop, let's see what it comes up with the output. Drop like a stone. That's pretty awesome, right? It's pretty neat uh the travel agent example so in this case what is provided speak as if you are a travel agent sharing a general overview without uh bullets about a location right so the, the input is Athens. here's a description and here's something in excited voice that's pretty neat and some of the few examples so let me add another one uh let's say seattle Washington okay and okay let's test it all right so let's see what it comes up with okay uh, here's the output so it gave us two different outputs I want to actually see like how this is going to look like in the API as well so we're going to look at that in a minute uh, but the response for Portland and Maine is that it's a city in the state of Maine it's the largest city in Maine and uh, the seat of Cumberland County, right? And here is what it would sound like an excited voice, right? Similarly, an output for uh, Seattle as well. So this is pretty awesome. Let's look at the Python code. So it's going to be very similar to what we saw in the first example. I'm going to close out this one. Okay. Uh, let's see. So you need to provide your API key, right? Let's see if anything is different. Uh, in this case, uh, so we'll still have to provide things uh, in, in the text uh, form. Let me actually just run this and see what the outcome or the output looks like. Okay, I wanted to look at how um, the data input will look like because in this case, it's, it's in the form of table, right? So if you look at it here, so the actual prompt that we are providing speak as if you are a travel agent, right? Uh, and then we have on the new line location so that's the Athens then the new another the new, new line is basically the description right uh and then uh, I think this is the okay and then there's another new line where you have the excited voice right so it seems like you need to use the colon uh in order to differentiate it uh, different fields or different columns like the way you have it here okay and then uh, you know, there's another example for another city uh, as well. So that's how you, you need to provide in the form of a table. So let's look at the response, how the response looks like.
Okay, so and here is how you are going to get the response. So initially, it's just the general description and then excited voice. So this is pretty neat. Pretty neat. It seems to be working pretty good. It also has a chat model. So let's look at that. In this case, they have a few uh, samples. So let's chat with an alien. Okay, so the context be an alien that lives on one of Jupiter's moons. So you need to provide the context. And here's what the uh, user will say. And then uh, what uh, is the response uh, from the model. And again, you can experiment here uh, in order to test the behavior of the model. So I'm going to say, uh, how is the weather uh, there? All right, let's see what it comes up with. The model is thinking and then like it kind of remembers the context so it says the weather on europa is very cold and harsh the average temperature is below is about minus 70 degrees celsius all right and so on and so forth so this is pretty good uh let's look at another example so this is imagine a world and again uh you need to simply provide uh, a, a context so uh, that will set the tone and style of the instruction for the model all right, so here, I think this is just saying some example output and you can test it out here. Uh, now the model here is a chat by son instead of uh, text. Uh, the API looks for this, or the, the code actually looks for this. So I'm gonna open this in another uh, collab. Okay, um, so, so don't worry about these. These are simple text messages, but I think the most important part is uh, that you need to provide uh, examples, then the messages and the corresponding context. Okay, uh, a couple of other things to see. Uh, if you go back to these, uh, so there is actually a, a prompt gallery as well. So these are some examples that they have provided. Uh, for example, uh, let's look at uh, this one. Let's say this. So this is uh, who are all the people and places named in the paragraph below respond in the JSON file. So uh, imagine you have uh, a bunch of information in the form of uh, uh, text, right? And you want to extract relevant information and put them in a JSON file, right? So this is able to easily do that uh, because here it's extracting all the people from the text as well as the different places. Now there is a rel another relevant example which extract grammar uh, from the sentences. So the input is going to be a sentence and the output is supposed to be in, uh, nouns, verbs, and adjectives, right? And this is a very similar table to what we saw before. So as in, uh, you are going to provide some examples and from those examples it can learn. And then when you provide a new input uh, syntax, uh, sentence, then it will be able to retrieve nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So this is pretty neat for information retrieval. Okay, let's look at another one. So this is a classify a request. Uh, so basically, Hey, example prompt. So you have provided some examples. For example, I would like to listen to a song by uh, Daft Punk. So uh, that means you are talking about um, music. So for example, here are simple sentences and the, uh, what we are talking about, the kind of topic, right? And you can provide then um, some input examples and it will be able to predict uh, the output. Now, what uh, other things that you can do with it, right? So this um, API can actually write code for you. So here's an example uh, that you can write a code to generate multiple of a number from a given list, right? And it's able to do that. Uh, we looked at some writing examples, so you can definitely do it. Uh, here's an editing one. So rewrite this into a call, a casual email, right? So it will be able to get your text and write an email for you. And all of this is through the API, right? So problem solving, um, I guess like a recommendation system. Then you can analyze data or extract data. That's what we also looked at. And the last one is actually uh, agents. Okay, so you can describe different operations and then um, it will perform those operations. For example, uh, this is uh, behaving as a dungeon master, right? And here's the output based on the information that provided like um, different moves to perform uh, for the game. So this is pretty neat. Now the context window uh, for this Palm 2 API is around 8,000 uh, tokens. 
which is uh, pretty decent and is comparable to uh, what GPT-4 offers you. So if you haven't um, gotten on, on, on the waitlist yet, I'm going to put a link in the description uh, and you can join the waitlist. Now, a couple of other things. Um, right now it's a preview, so it's not commercially available. You cannot use this for commercial purposes. I have been playing with it for a little bit and I don't know like what's the limit of usage. I couldn't find that information anywhere. Now they have already showcased um, some sample apps that pe people have developed on top of it. Uh, so it would be actually nice to see uh, what people can come up with. But again, it's uh, in a preview mode right now. Anyways, it's great to see that as uh, users, we will have a lot more options now. So the, it's definitely a direct competition to OpenAI. And the models that Google is offering, they are very powerful models. So I will be exploring this API further in my upcoming videos. Uh, so definitely uh, keep an eye out for those videos. Uh, they have provided very comprehensive documentations to uh, get you started. Anyways, um, if you want to keep yourself up to date with the latest advancement in uh, machine learning and generative AI, check out our Discord server as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.